flowering plants are the most common and diverse group of plants alive today, they were the last to evolve, appearing alongside dinosaurs in the middle of the Mesozoic. The number of flowering plants alive today is estimated between 200 and 250,000. Modern flowering plants are classified into two groups, the monocots, about 50,000 species of irises, orchids, and grasses, and the dicots, which represent the majority of flowering plants. Some flowering plants are annuals, surviving one year only. Annual plants have the advantage of being able to grow in unpredictable environments. Others are biennials, which reproduce in their second year before they die. Often the plant, such as the Queen Anne's lace pictured here, produces only a rosette of leaves in the first year, and a, in the second year a tall stem which bears the flowers. Many flowering plants are perennials, which do not have such short limits on their lifespans. Most of the trees in our area are flowering plants. Flowering plants come in a variety of sizes and stem types. Many flowering plants are short, such as black medic. They may be tall, as in Joe pieweed. They can possess arching or creeping stems, as in blackberries. They can form vines, such as virgin's bower and wild grape. They can grow as bushes, such as honeysuckle and mountain laurel. While most plants depend on photosynthesis to obtain energy from sunlight, there are a few which are decomposers, such as Indian pipe. Flowers vary in size, shape, and color. Since animals that pollinate flowers include small and large animals, there are a diversity of flower sizes. Some flowers are small, such as bluettes, bed straw, and forget-me-nots. Other flowers are large, such as lilies, and sunflowers. In order to access the nectar and pollen, pollinators must reach the sexual organs of the flower. Some flowers are very open so that unspecialized pollinators can access them, such as sunflowers. And wild roses. Fusion of petals is found in bell wort and white campion. Many flowering plants protect themselves with defensive spines and thorns, such as those of teasel, tear thumb, and thistles. Many flowers have patterns and lines which guide pollinators to the rewards within, such as those of violets. Some of these patterns are not visible to humans, but are visible to bees, which can see an ultraviolet. Buttercups, for example, have ultraviolet patterns which are not visible to humans. Many flowers enclose their seeds in a nutritious fruit. Animals which ingest the fruit typically excrete the seeds and feces at some distance from the plant, helping to spread the population. Fruits are produced in honeysuckle, blackberry, and teaberry. Other animals have their seeds encased in structures which adhere to animals, such as mammal fur or human clothing. Eventually the seeds fall off and the animal has unwittingly helped the plant disperse its offspring. Such seeds packets are evident in tick trefoil,